Yeah, hello everyone, Nervin Reacts here, and welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to be reacting uh, uh, to how North Korea makes money by vision. The reason why I'm reacting to this because, well, it's been over a year since uh, the Russian invasion of Ukraine. And, uh, the, and since the EU and the US and many other countries have been imposing sanctions, etc, etc, on Russia so as to, uh, so as to, uh, uh, bankrupt their economy so they can't afford it even more, uh, military, uh, equipment, uh, for the war, uh, yet they, yet only around, only at around, uh, if I'm, uh, if, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, only around, like, 2 or 3 percent of their uh, economy has uh, decreased uh, so so yeah even uh, even after all these sanctions uh, Russia is still making lots and lots of money <coughs> and so we're going to react ah uh, uh, so uh, we're going to be reacting to uh, a still communist slash socialist country uh, that has close ties uh, with Russia and supposed and is supposedly selling missiles and uh, ammunition uh, to Russia, and that is North Korea. Uh, so, so uh, yeah, let's see how they make uh, money uh, for their nuclear uh, development tests. How does a bitterly impoverished, famine-ravaged country with little in the way of discernible industry afford a nuclear weapons program? How do its elites live in the lap of luxury despite ruthless international sanctions? The short answer is weaponized nerds. Here's the long answer. North Korea- Yep, if I, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, how North Korea- since, uh, North Korea is so heavily sanctioned, they mostly make income from, uh, black market deals. Uh, black market deals, and uh, also, uh, uh, cy cyber robbing, which is basically, uh, cy uh, cyber attacks uh, in order to steal money. But not only that, I hear they also have, uh, uh, North Korean restaurants in, uh, many, in many countries such as, uh, China, Vietnam, etc. They also have North Korean... O well, not technically owned, but uh, they get a good, like for example, in Cambodia, there's this museum that uh, that's been built by North Koreans. Many of the artworks in that museum as well are also made by North Korea, and uh, and they uh, ha made a contract saying that for the first ten years, North Korea will gain all the profit, and after that, after those ten years are done. And the plot, the profits will be split, split fifty fifty. So yeah, even with all those sanctions, they're still making lots of money. Is a pariah state, the most isolated nation on earth. Its leader's stubborn insistence on self-reliance means ordinary people can't easily import useful goods from the outside world, like fuel or fertilizer. The country does export negligible quantities of coal and shellfish, but overall, it's fair to say the broad economic tax base underpinning all other modern nation states simply doesn't exist here. So how does North Korea make money? Historically, it's turned to crime. In the 80s and 90s, this nefarious... Yep. Like, that's what they said. ...nefariousness typically extended only as far as small-time organized crime hustles. Think smuggling cigarettes, amphetamines, or the body parts of endangered species. One of the more lucrative old-school scams, however, was a wildly successful state-sponsored trade in counterfeit $100 bills. This counterfeit money wheeze, which ran for decades and netted the North Korean regime around 15 million bucks a year, was mercilessly stamped out by the US government in the early years of the 21st century, which prompted the outlaw state to get creative. How? North Korea then turned to hacking. Remember the Sony Pictures hack back in 2014? Sony Pictures... Re yep, uh, when they released, uh, yeah, this movie, uh, they must have been... Kim Jong-un uh, must have been so pissed when he saw this. Uh, and, uh, yeah, that's when Sony was cyber-attacked. ...released a Seth Rogen movie called The Interview, which brutally mocked the North Korean regime and especially its dear leader, Kim Jong-un. 
Outraged, Pyongyang condemned Sony's comedy flick as a wanton act of terror and responded by hacking the Hollywood giant's computer systems. This major hack led to the embarrassing release of sensitive internal emails, including one calling Angelina Jolie a minimally talented spoiled brat and the script for a forthcoming Bond movie. That hack, however, was merely the shiny showbiz tip of a colossal cybercrime iceberg. The real work being carried out by North Korean hackers was, and is, targeting banks. According to a 2019 United Nations report, North Korean hackers have so far raised some $2 billion in just a decade of state-sponsored online malfeasance. That was two years ago, by the way, so the real figure is almost certainly more than $2 billion. Exploiting weaknesses in the banking systems of nations like the Philippines and Bangladesh, but also more advanced economies like Japan, isn't straightforward. But North Korea has a long-term strategy. The regime seeks out and recruits the brightest young children from its otherwise threadbare schooling system. These math- Yep, despite everything bad about North Korea, they have a pretty good uh, education system. Uh, they have a pretty good education system uh, in Pyongyang, every child- Every child is required to learn at least one musical instrument, and uh, they perform in the uh, in the I for, I forgot the mass game I forgot what you call it, but uh, it's in the mass games, you know, and the extra extra the extravagant display of art of uh, art dance etc etc inclined whiz kids are funneled into specialized high schools, hothoused as if they were young Olympians, and later enrolled at well-funded Pyongyang institutions like the Kim Chaek University of Technology or Kim Il-sung University. Throughout, they're encouraged to code and hone their online skills. Remember, fewer than 1% of ordinary North Koreans have internet access. So if you're computer inclined... Yeah, that's because uh, in North Korea, they don't have an internet. They have something called an intranet. Uh, and the coding for that is based off the old uh, coding of Fire of Firefox. Find hacking is a great way out of the slums. Upon graduation, these elite Korean coders, described as warriors by King Jong Un, go to work for the government. Here, they're assigned to cyber espionage units with shady names like Enemy Collapse Sabotage Bureau or the still more oblique Unit 180, whose mission is apparently conducting cyber operations to steal foreign money from outside North Korea. Defectors rarely try to leave the Hermit Kingdom because the regime would visit swift and brutal revenge on their family and friends. One brave whistleblower talk yep uh, that's because uh, uh criminal punishment in north korea is really really extreme and not just you get sent uh to concentration camp extreme and that's uh, pretty obvious but you know in any other country if you commit a crime they would the police would only arrest you right but in north korea they take it further if you commit a crime they not only arrest you but the arrest of three generations of your family, your grandparents, your children, your children, your grandchildren, etc. So if you were to do something uh, the regime doesn't like, like for example, defect, uh, defect your fam, the family that you left behind when you defected would be brutally punished uh, uh, for your actions. So to def. So to do something against the North Korea and the regime, not only dangerous to you, but also to, to dangerous to people uh, you love and care about. So yeah, and that. So yeah, one of the many reasons why uh, why uh, the people haven't tried to revolt against the regime is not because they're scared or because uh, they're fine with being oppressed, but rather it's because. A starving, uh, uneducated peasants don't make good revolutionaries. It's sad but true. Told the New Yorker that North Korea's elite hackers are rewarded for their efforts with cars or comfortable houses, and a special place in the affections of the tyrannical Kim Jong Un. Every so often, like the Sony episode, these hackers' work makes global headlines. In 2017, the so-called WannaCry 2.0 hack disabled computer systems at Boeing, the German Federal Railway Network, and Britain's National Health Service. Mostly, however, North Korea is responsible for under-the-radar ransomware attacks, the kind smaller financial institutions have increasingly come to 
see as an unfortunate cost of doing business. These often come via malware attacks using the internationally trusted SWIFT banking system. SWIFT, aka the Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunications, makes fund requests look legitimate. For instance, on one February day in 2016, the US Federal Reserve was tricked into paying out $101 million in fraudulent SWIFT transactions, all instigated by North Korean scammers. Cryptocurrency exchanges are by no means immune. During one 2018 heist, an unnamed Hong Kong exchange had its clients' hot wallets ransacked to the tune of 10,800 Bitcoin. In 2018, that haul was worth $94 million. Today, it's more than half a billion dollars. Can they be stopped? Much of the hacking, analysts agree, is carried out by North Korean coders situated outside of the country's borders. VPNs, of course, complicate this picture, but it is known that young Korean coders are encouraged to spend time abroad, at least elsewhere in Southeast Asia, learning firsthand how other countries' systems and fail-safes operate. Neighboring China and also Russia are broadly... Yeah, despite everything uh, uh, the media, especially the West, says about North Korea, North, uh, saying uh, its citizens can't leave the country, they're, uh, they're prisoners. That's not exactly the case. Well, it is true. It is somewhat true, but not exactly. North Korea does send does a lot, uh, does send uh, uh, some of its students abroad for overseas uh, uh, schooling in uh, countries like uh, China, China and Ru Russia, and basically countries uh, that ha that have ties to communism. So yeah, and so yeah, another uh, for I forgot to mention another form of income. Uh, for North Korea, and that's to send uh, overseas workers to uh, countries with uh, extradition uh, treaties with North Korea, such as you know Vietnam and uh, China, Vietnam and China, uh, and also uh, Russia, obviously, and uh, some uh, African countries. So, and basically, most of their most of those overseas workers' wages would go to North Korean Treasury, not uh, to their bank account, not to the workers' bank accounts. He's sympathetic to the pariah state, which shields its elites from the most brutal sanctions. Tellingly, it appears no Chinese or Russian banks have yet been targeted by the regime. What do you think? Is society now locked in a bitter arms race between Western cybersecurity experts and weaponized North Korean nerds? Let us know in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe for more reassuringly secure tech content. And that... <laughs> the end of the video uh, this was a uh, pretty uh, intro uh, uh, educational sorry if I was talking a lot or pausing too much uh, but I just really want to give my input you know uh, so yeah a lot of people associate war with tanks and soldiers on the front lines but nowadays war is mostly fought uh, in the computer rooms with hackers and etc because that's going to be the way of the future of warfare so uh yeah even though they don't go on the front these uh hackers don't go on the front lines they are just as important uh as your average uh, uh soldier and uh etc anyway uh i don't really uh, have anything else to say really so uh yeah if you like this video, please hit that like and subscribe. Check out my Facebook page. The link is in the description. I'll also post a link uh, to the original video by TechVision down below. He makes good content, uh, good educational content. Anyway, that's all for today. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.